Hey, good day everyone. Long time no see. It's just been school holidays and yeah. But today the kids are back at school. I have this canvas board here. It is 12 by 16 or 30.5 by 40.6 centimeters. We'll go with the inches, 12 by 16. Now we're doing a Halloween painting today and it's going to be a witch flying past a moon, which is um, very original. <laughs> Anyway, to start with, I have um, gessoed this because this was this had something else on it that I didn't want, so I just gessoed over it. And now I have a plate because this is the perfect size for my moon. And I'm going to get a pencil, a light pencil, like a like a H. I'll pull that a 3B. I don't want a 3B. HB, that's fine. Now it doesn't need to be centered. I mean, if you want your moon over here, you can have your moon over here. But I'm going to have mine about there. Now I'm just drawing around the plate. Voila! Moon done. <laughs> if only it was that easy. Can I see I have some Payne's Grey here. Now I'm going to do, I drew in the moon so that I don't paint in the moon because it just makes it easier so you don't have to go over the Payne's Grey with the white or the, the dug down white. So I'm going to do Payne's Grey and I'm going to make this area furthest, further, furthest away from moon darker and I'm just going to make this bit here just a little bit lighter, not much though, okay? So grab our Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is, um, it kind of looks like black but it is grey obviously but it has a blue tinge to it. If I show you something, way to figure out what, um, Shade is mix, what colours are mixed together to make a colour. Grab it, so that's the Payne's Grey, and then mix it with the white. And it's kind of a, a blue, it's got a, a bit of blue in there. You can see it when you add the white. Well, I can anyway. <laughs> I could be imagining things, I don't know. And I didn't get any paper towels. So I've just got a brush, just a flat brush, the biggest one you can use. And we start painting. Yeah. Just got a little bit of white on here just to lighten up this bit here. <laughs> now my paint spray is a heavy body, it is rather thick, so I have to keep adding water to my brush. Probably recommend using like a, a Joe Sonia or a, a, a not a heavy body one. And then when you come along here, just get some more Payne's Grey and do our blending. And more 
white. Blend it out. Oops. Found the hidden bit of white on my paintbrush. That's easily fixed. Let's get the panes grey. Go over it. I'm having trouble doing down here because I'm on a really bad angle because of the camera. You're really bad at what? Mm -hmm. Can I have some paper, please? There's another way to dry my brush. Oops. I got three pieces. Did you? Yeah. I'm just going to go over the bits that I see the canvas with paint spray. Okay, I'm going to do paint splatters. Now I'm using high flow golden paint, white. You and I'm just using a crappy old brush that you know, I think was one of the kids. It's like a hog's, <laughs> almost that hog's breath, uh, hog bristle, whatever. I can't think of the word. Yeah, it's hog bristle. Yeah, it's just a crappy old brush. You could use a fan brush. You could use your paint splatter brush, but I'm just going to use this one. And I got my liquid white. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on it like that and I'm going to pull back and flick it. If. If you want bigger stars, go closer and flick it. Okay, this bit here still isn't dry, it's a little bit sticky but that's fine because I'm going to do the moon but the bit after the moon we have to wait for it to dry because we do. <laughs> anyway, I have titanium white and I've mixed just a little bit of the paints grey there because I don't want it completely white because the white is for highlights and things like that so I don't know why I have this brush I was messing around and I grabbed the wrong brush yeah, so I just got the same brush I used before for the um, background <laughs> words don't work for me So we're not doing an in-depth moon for this. This is just a quick Halloween painting.
Now I'm doing it curved, like, because the moon is curved. And if you want something to look curved, you have to paint it with a curve, or, you know. So if I just did it straight like that, it wouldn't look as good. But like I said, we're not doing a really full in-depth moon. Now I've just got more Payne's Grey mixed with the white and I've changed the brush to this one that I did the paint splatter with. Like I said, not in depth. Just getting some white, the, the white of the colour of the moon that we did before. I'm just blending this bit in. And this bit. Now, just for the final bit of the moon, just titanium white, and I have a round brush. This is my my favourite round brush, my number four. I'll try and keep it straight. I got the twitches today for some reason. Just blending this little bit in here. Add like a little dark spot. It's 
it's going to be behind the witch anyway, so that was pointless. Anyway, this is basically the gist. This is just a quick moon. And the reason why we did it, the white and the paints grey, is so that when we did the outer edge, it, you, well, you can see it, as you can see, there's a very distinct difference between the outer edge and the inside. Now, something else you could do if you want to, just quickly in the background, titanium white, a small brush, this is my 510. You could do a couple of those, um, you know, those big stars. You know, you could do a few of them. Now I'm going to let that dry. Okay, the moon is dry, the stars are dry, everything's dry. Yes, so I traced in the um, the traceable that I'll have for the, this painting. I traced that in, just doing the same method I've done on previous ones, where you cover the back with a, I think I did a 4B pencil, and then I just traced over the front. I'm going to fix up the eyes. They're not, I'm not happy with them. But yeah, we'll paint that and a little cat and then it's done okay like I said we're not going to do a great big um, amount of detail so it's not going to be hugely detailed but it's going to be good when I say detail I'm not going to go right into the face and do all these amazing cheekbones and things like that we're just going to do a simple cartoonish drawing and you can do her whatever colour you want. If you want to do her hat green, then yeah, do a hat green. I'm going to go with black, so I have my round brush and I have black because I want to do it black, so I need black. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to grab pink if I want black. It is a windy day here. I don't know where any of you are from or if anyone even watches this or listens or whatever. But I'm Australian. Oh, <gasps> shock horror. And to be honest, Australia really doesn't um, acknowledge Halloween. We don't. The, the shops try to sell their stuff, but Australians just don't like it. I took my kids trick-or-treating last year, and I had people just, no, I don't do that. And, then, and slamming the door in my kids' faces and... Every year I have some decorations out the front. I have the lights on. I always, it, it's obvious that, you know, I have all these lollies and so I do it. I don't really celebrate it, but you know, kids like to do it. When I was a kid, I went trick or treating. Now this was, I don't know, 30 years ago. I got given an apple. That was you know, for a ten year old kid, that was that was awesome. Not. And then when I knocked on another person's door and I said trick or treat, they said trick. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? 
I don't even know what trick or treat means. What do I gotta do a trick or do you do a trick or and so we just stared at each other. I had no idea what to do. <laughs> so I like to just have it. The kids get super excited when people knock on the door and they're all dressed up. I don't do it for me, I do it for kids. And for all those kids, 30 years ago we got given apples. I do it for them. <laughs> sort of a Halloween superhero. <laughs> I'm just going to do the outline of this boot, otherwise I'm going to lose it. Now if you're worried about losing your boot, <laughs> just grab your, your detailer and a little bit of white and just do the heel of the boot. and the reflection of the boot. And do the same for the um, hat up here. The brim of the hat is going to be a little bit whiter. I want to do some more black there, so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to finish that bit there yet. So I'm going black again. I'm just going to finish off this part of the hat. We'll put the highlights and reflections and things like that in. Not a great deal, but enough to define the brim of the hat and the top of the hat. Now for the bottom of her dress, it's going to be black, but it's going to be a lighter black, so grey. <laughs> um, so just get some black and some white, I'm just mixing it till I'm happy, I might try that. 
this is the bottom half of her dress making this bit a little bit darker so I'm using more black I need the black to dry before I can do the, the next her hair and that because I don't want to mix it all up. So I'm going to do the broomstick. So I've got some burnt umber. Missed the paint. <laughs> For her hair, I wanted a, a, a deep red, so I'm using Napthal Crimson. Uh, you could use Brilliant Red, you could use just Crimson, you could use, you know, Craft Paint Red. Any red. It is, I, say, I know I say it a lot, but it's, it's your painting. Mm, my red is very thick. I'm just going to go along the outline of her hair. Now I have very thick paint and it looks like it's drying so it must be an old tube. 
spot I'm going to continue because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> I'm just going to fill this right in. And we can do our second layer of black down here. Second layer just makes it look so much better. I'm going to do a point on that hat, but with a smaller brush. This bit here is going to be a little, little darker, a little in the shadow because it's under her boobs. Okay, still using black and I'm just getting my detailer. I'm just going to put a couple of shadows in here for the folds.
and I'm just going to dry brush and I'm just going to rub that in a little bit so you can still see it but it's not so harsh Now I've still got, I'm getting black and white, so I'm making a light grey because these Just using that um, brush again to just blend it. It's got no paint on it. These are uh, ruffles, like a like a shawl. She's got on. more 
And if you do too much white or whatever, then um, just go over with the black again. Probably the hardest thing of this painting is her face. Just to add a little bit of interest on her skirt, I'm going to make the bottom a lot whiter. So, almost white, but not quite. <laughs> so, I don't know, just... Just got black and I'm just going to do this line black here. Now there is another bit to her, her dress there, it's, um, she's not just flying around with her la -de -dars hanging out. <laughs> is that just root? But I wanted a muted kind of red. I just did another layer of the Naphthal Crimson in her hair. So do another layer of her hair. And now I have a Lizarin, whoops, sorry, permanent Lizarin. And that's the colour and my detailer. And that's the colour that I want to put here. Just draw the outline of this bit so you can see what it looks like. So 
it's kind of like the underskirt or petticoat or well not petticoat because that's an old term isn't it There's my dog. So that is what we're doing. That bit there. And also this bit here. I wanted the dress not as bright as her hair, so that's why I chose the lizard. I should have got a different paintbrush, but um, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'd rather struggle painting than move to find the right paintbrush. I'll learn one day. Now alizarin is very transparent so unless you want it to look transparent you're going to need probably two or three layers. And I'm going to have a drink. Or I forget the cat. I'll draw him in so I don't forget him. I'm just gonna draw the point. No. And do the mix a little bit of white and black together to make a light, actually a dark grey. And we'll just do this reflection. Um, on the hat.
got the same colour I just used there. Just putting a very subtle highlight on there. Now on this side of the dress they're going to be on the left hand side of the black line there and on this side because the moon is all around her it's going to be the highlight is going to be on the right hand side if that makes sense hopefully it does get the burnt umber again and do another coat I dry it and still get more drop. Another coat on here. I forgot to do her sleeve there in permanent alizarin, so just go ahead and do that. It's a, a low hanging sleeve, as you can see, it, it hangs low. And the next step will be doing the second coat of the permanent alizarin on that bottom part of her skirt and the bodice and the sleeve too if you did it at the right time, unlike me. Like I said before, alizarin is fairly transparent so the more coats you do the better but mine looked pretty good with, well really good with two coats so that I stopped there but if yours is still weak or transparent and you don't like it, do another coat. Getting white and black and making a dark grey again. I just want to see if this is light enough. Might make it a little bit lighter than that. Got some black. Just to blend in these highlights. Now I am using skin tone light, but you can make your own skin tone. I, my favourite skin tone recipe is um, a 50-50 of yellow ochre or yellow oxide and transparent red oxide. Mix them together and then I add a little bit of alizarin crimson just for the, the redness of the cheeks. And then from, that's the base and then from, from that you can make it darker or lighter by adding white or darker, I usually add a little bit of burnt umber or whatever skin tone you're looking for. You. So right now, I am doing an easy painting and I am doing skin tone light. Or you can do skin tone dark or whatever. Her legs here. I 
So just go ahead and do her knees, there's two of them, her hand which is waving and a little part of her arm and there's a couple of fingers holding onto the broomstick there. Uh, don't forget her face, her little ear and her boobs. <laughs> For these fingers, I'm just going to use a detailer. Just going to fill in this little bit of the broom that I missed. Oops. I'm going to bang the camera. Sorry about my big head in the way. I'm just filling in the little bit of the broom there that's between her fingers that I missed and a little bit on the edge. And I missed a little bit of hair here too. So that's our crimson. Okay, yeah, so now I'm gonna add some black to that lizard to that permanent lizard. So uh, it looks like that one is going to be a darker version of the Elizabeth. And we're just going to put in the shadow here. I was just dry brushing then, um, using a dry brush, what I did before. Now we're just going to add a couple of creases here and blend it in. Just like that. Add another crease and blend it in. Now for the crease on the boobs. Oops. Oh, dropping paintbrush everywhere. I'm going down to my detailer and I'm using that alizarin and the black. And you want to make it curved.
just a couple of little lines there. Now it looks black, but it's not. It is the alizarin and the black mixed together. And what I'm also going to do is do a line here. Round brush <laughs> and black. A little bit of the black and white again um, for the, the same colour we did here. And just a couple of creases. So just go ahead and do another coat of the skin tone colour across her whole body. Obviously only the parts where the skin tone is. But yeah, do a second coat of that. Now just for a quick simple darker version of that skin tone, I've added burnt umber to the skin tone so that we can make the creases the shadows sorry just gonna make it a little bit darker Doubted all that I could do, knowing what I need to do. All I can say in words is thank you. I think it's what you need to do. Away from the shore, amongst the waves, exactly where I want to be. I am where I want to be. Remember the start, remember the start, when my future needing clarity. Now I'm just getting burnt umber, just to go in the middle of this darkened spot.
I've just got to move this on the angle, that's better for me. Just do the face with the burnt umbar, the same same one that you did for the creases on the hands and the boobs and to define the, to define the creases. So just follow the picture, the traceable and draw in the eyes and um, I just wanted to say that lovely um, recorder music in the background is courtesy of my five-year-old son. To do these shadows on the hair, get the colour that you, the red that you did with the hair colour and add a little bit of black to it and then just do the shadows there and blend them in with the dry brush. Now I just got the red again. Using a detailer and the same colour red that I used for her hair, I'm going to draw in her lips. Now, here comes the car. Waiting, waiting. The top lip usually makes like an M shape and then the bottom one is um, half a circle but bigger than the M on top, if that makes sense. A bit of burnt over here. White. Little bit of the skin tone colour and burnt umber, just some burnt umber and white. 
Just doing a couple of highlights on the broom. Not a lot. And I also might do like a couple of dark spots on it. Maybe she's got a couple of cracks or shadow of the cat I've got some burnt umbra and some black just gonna give her green eyes now I had cold cobalt green hue in front of me so that's what I decided to use because it was in front of me no other reason the dark skin tone color again Just mix it in with normal skin tone. And then do another coat of black on the cat. I just gave the cat an eye with cadmium, cadmium yellow light. And now I'm doing her pupils with black. Now for the final bit of the broom, final bit of the broom is the, the bristles and I'm doing it in yellow ochre and using my round brush. Using Burnt Umber and the Detailer Brush, you make the, some individual lines for the bristles or whatever it is they have on brooms. Just make a, a few of the lines. Just using yellow ochre and the detailer brush to go over and blend some, basically to give the yellow ochre a second coat because I forgot to do that. <laughs> but I won't admit that. <laughs> no, just get some yellow ochre and go between the lines. And if you go over some of the burnt umber lines, just go over them again with burnt umber. Add some little yellow ochre individual bits poking out at the top end of the broomstick here. I just got some Brilliant Red and my detailer brush just to draw like a little bit of rope or ribbon that's holding the strands of straw, I think it is straw, yeah. The strands of straw on the broomstick. Now just using Titanium White, go through and add a couple of highlights on a few parts of her hair and her eyes and the tip of her nose and a couple on her mouth. Just put it wherever you think that there would be a really sharp highlight. And once you've gone through and done your highlights and you're happy with everything, 
then you're done and you've got a pretty cool Halloween painting. Now you can do her smaller or bigger or you can do the moon smaller or bigger or, or different colours or just make it your own and enjoy it 